we get a lot of poll data in, but in my estimation, it's not taking everything into account. Now, one of the reasons I think this is because there's a lot of early ballots that are being submitted, right? Or requests that are being made for early ballots. And I think you need to look at that data and the momentum that we're seeing for Donald Trump there and compare and contrast it with what we're seeing in the polls because the polls are kind of tight. I mean, I'm looking at this stuff and I'm like, really? Really? So Bloomberg seems to think in their latest data that somehow it's a razor thin margin with the edge towards Kamala Harris in the swing states. I'm not so sure about that. I mean, I'm going to go back to the Teamsters, for example. The Teamsters Union, which is 60% for Trump, 34% for Harris. And those are the people that will actually tell you what they think, right? Because let's not forget who the heck is actually going to tell some little pollster who calls up on the phone and says, I'm on a recorded line. I'd like to know who you're going to vote for. I don't know as every... Trump supporter is actually going to admit that they're vote, And I know you guys, I know, I, I always look in your comments, you're like, well, I would, I would, I would. And, you know, so would I. But not everybody's like that. And a lot of people are very concerned about privacy. And they're very concerned about retaliation. And they're very concerned about big data. And the fact that they're on a recorded line with these pollsters. So I don't think you're getting a full read. Let's go to North Carolina, for example. This is just out of North Carolina, and I'm looking at Trump Harris. Dead even. This is out of Meredith. Okay. You know, dead even. It's possible. It's certainly possible. I've seen some polls that suggest Harris could even take North Carolina, but you know what? I'm not buying it. I'm just actually not buying it. And when I look at some more data out there, and I look at, well, some of these early voting signals, I'm convinced he's actually doing better in North Carolina than we are being led to believe. Let's go to Arizona. There is a new poll out of Arizona. This is a Suffolk poll, and wow, he's way ahead there. I mean, this is different than, say, the New York Times poll that you saw. He's not necessarily way ahead there in Arizona, but he is actually. Well, you know what? He's doing pretty well. <laughs> He's up to, I mean, if you can be up to in the New York Times poll, that, that probably means something. But North Carolina, 48 to 48. Hmm. Um, you know, this is, this is confusing. It's confusing to so many people because you look at all this new poll data coming in every single day and you get something different every single day. Like consider Quinnipiac that came out. Also this week, I mean, that's something to see. You get Trump at 48, Harris 47. You compare and contrast it to Quinnipiac, but this time of year, back in 2020, and there was a much, much different, different kind of spread with Biden up 10 over Trump. And so if Harris is only at 47 at this particular time, and that's with all the momentum in the world behind her, then can she really take Pennsylvania? Now, look, Joe was from there. He had a following there. He had a base of support there. I think there are a lot of people in Pennsylvania that don't really feel so enthusiastic about Kamala Harris, and they don't feel so enthusiastic about even going to vote, which is why momentum in a race like this one that is this close, momentum can actually be everything. Right? And that's what the pollsters are not really taking into consideration. I look to Nate Silver's model because it's interesting to me. It's a little more complex in that he's not just looking at poll data. He's also looking at economic situations, et cetera, in various states. But even here, I mean, this is like devastating for Trump. So I'm definitely not really getting that one. You mean to tell me, Nate, 58% to Harris and 41% to Trump? I don't really think so. So... I'm left saying, okay, I don't think the polls are entirely right. You know, this is what I said in 2016, and I was right. In 2020, I was a little more hesitant. Well, because, you know, they shut down the country, and that was kind of a big deal. And I think that people were not as motivated on the economy, and so they weren't as angry about the economic situation, and they therefore were not as motivated to vote. This time, however, is extremely different. So when you take a look at all of the data, here's what I'm going to tell you guys. Kamala Harris should be very, very, very worried. And that's because of something I'm going to share with you. Pennsylvania, Virginia, 
North Carolina, Florida, we are all seeing in each one of these states a whole lot of momentum for early votes. That's important. That's a consideration. Think about Illinois, the state of Illinois. Do you know that in 2020, they got 3.6 million ballots mailed in by Democrats? 3.6 million. That's a lot of ballots, right? And of course, you know, they all went for Biden. In 2022, they got 1.6 million. I give you that number as a frame of reference. Back in 2018, they got 1.4 million. So, you know, you could probably count on 1.4 to 1.6 million Democrat ballots being mailed in in the state of Illinois. I mean, 3.6 would be the outlier, right? Because it was 2020. Guess how many votes they now have being mailed in from Democrats in 2024? Not even a million. Not even a million. So 990,000 Votes are being cast in the state of Illinois for Democrats. Well, that's certainly nothing like the 3.6 million, and certainly nothing like you used to get there in Illinois. So what does it tell you? Democrats are not excited about this lady. Go to Wisconsin. This is something to see. My gosh, ladies and gentlemen, let me show you Wisconsin. Okay, I know it's a lot to look at on the screen. This is by a group called L2 that's gathering all of this data. And they're looking at Wisconsin, and they're looking at who is actually sending in the ballots now. Let me direct your eyes. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, thank you for that, or Spotify, thank you for that. Don't forget to leave us five stars and a nice little message, (laughs) nice little rating there. If you're watching on YouTube, terrific. Join the live conversation. Make sure you hit the bell and you subscribe. Look at that 37 to 41%. It tells you Republicans are actually up. Wow, in Wisconsin, they're up four points. But wait a second, that's not what the Bloomberg poll is telling me. I mean, I'm not even seeing that kind of stuff in the New York Times. Now, are we? No, we're not. And yet, go back to something like this. The Gallup survey that talks about the issues that are so important to voters and historically, where have you seen the edge go to? Republican, 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 U.S. satisfaction. Nobody's satisfied with the U.S. right now. So the advantage goes to certainly not the incumbent, certainly not Kamala, but the Republicans, economic confidence. That goes to Republicans. Party better able to keep America prosperous. That scene right now is being the Republican advantage. Presidential job approval, again, we got a big Republican advantage on that one. You get 39% approval for Mr. Joe Biden. So guess what? All of this stuff adds up to some things that I'm not actually seeing reflected in the polls right now. Let's go to Virginia for a moment. Okay, Virginia's interesting. In Virginia, they get a lot of absentee ballots coming in, but guess what? Not as many as they had last time around. In fact, they're down 1.3 points in terms of the number of Democrat ballots they have coming in versus Republicans up 7.7. This is according to Target Early. And then in Miami-Dade County, on this day, well, actually a couple weeks in advance, a couple weeks in advance, they were actually, they were actually up 13 points. So they were plus advantage 13 in Miami-Dade County. Miami-Dade County today, Democrats are up 3.1. It's in terms of the absentee ballot. So what is it telling you? There's no enthusiasm. There's no excitement. This woman is not really bringing them out of the woodwork, so to speak, which is something that was actually noticed in the Daily Beast. Let me go to this one for you, the Daily Beast writing. The clock is ticking, and Kamala Harris is not yet where she should be in the must-win battleground states. For all the joy and energy she is to Democrats inexplicably behind where Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton were in their respective races against Donald Trump. So in other words, this woman's not even doing as well as Hillary, nor as well as Joe, and that was a close election. Wow. Why is that? I'll tell you why it is. I mean, nobody wants more the same. Nobody wants the woman who is actually in charge of the administration as vice president to be continuing on in any kind of way, shape, or form because we get a lousy economy, we get a terrible international situation, and we get a heck of a bad situation on our border. So that's a problem. Of course, they're trying to spin it here in the Daily Beast writes, the good news for Harris is that, you know what, she's got room 
to grow. Millions of voters are still reachable and persuadable, and she only needs thousands in the handful of key states. The bad news is, is that guess what? Time indeed is running out. Tick tock, tick tock. So she's got a problem because here she is trying to say, oh, I'm going to improve the economy, I'm going to improve the economy, I'm going to bring in manufacturing jobs. She's trying to campaign in the state of Pennsylvania where she promised to end fracking jobs, right? Those are kind of important in the state of Pennsylvania. And now she's like, no, 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 I didn't mean it, I didn't mean it. People are like, well, what did you mean? We don't really know what she means because she's all over the place. Let me show you the Monmouth poll that came out yesterday. Again, I'm not buying this. 45 to 48, you mean to tell me she's got a three-point advantage among the people of Pennsylvania that are really up against it economically, that feel like their guy, their hometown guy, right, was, was tossed aside for the likes of Kamala Harris? It's not really working.